Hey there, weavers. Welcome back. This is Grace with Tangled Webs Weaving. In the last video, I showed you how I was warping the color and weave double weave project that I am working on. And now I need to get it onto the little eight shaft uh, Ashford table loom that I have. All right, so we have the uh, warp you can see here. Um, it is wound around my front beam. I have put my cross in my lee sticks and I've started slaying my reed. Now this is a 12 dent reed. It's going to be slayed at 24 ends per inch and um, I have about half of it slayed. So we're going to slay two ends per dent. Now if you remember each uh, four thread grouping is made up of a dark green, two light greens, and a white. So our pattern will alternate uh, from uh, light green, dark green, light green, white, and that will repeat for 12 uh, repeats and then we will change it to light green, white, light green, dark green. And so every 12 um, repeats of these four threads, I will have to change my slaying. So because we're slaying two picks per dent, um, each dent will include a light green and then the uh, other light green or the other color will be paired in a different dent. Now if I'm going to be threading it for the light green, white, light green, dark, I'm going to pair this of a light green and a dark green and I'm going to thread that first or slay that first and then I'll pair a light green and a white and slay that second. Um, so we are on um, our third repeat or our fourth repeat. So I am going to be slaying these with the light green white being first and then the light green dark being second. So I will just pull those through and then I will grab the next ones. And you don't really have to worry about um, how they're presenting themselves. Those four threads are in the uh, same um, cross. So all you're really worried about is making sure that you get the four threads through from the same cross and then pairing up the light green with a dark green and a white. And then making sure that you slay the white one first and the dark green second. And I've got the each um, bout wound around the front beam just to keep everything from slipping and sliding away on me. The nice thing about working with these larger gauges of yarn is um, everything goes pretty fast because you're not having to work with hundreds and hundreds of threads. All right, so there's that one. 
So I mean, this will be um, about 14 inches wide and I will weave them 20, about 24 inches long. And once they're wet finished and hemmed, they'll end up somewhere around um, 12 inches uh, tall because I'm weaving them sideways by um, 19 inches wide. Sometimes those are challenging to get separated. All right, so that is another repeat of 12. And we'll just double check and make sure that I have 12. So two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. 12. All right, so now I'm gonna take and put one of my clips back here and that will keep everything secure. And then I can count up my next 12 and continue on doing this. So, so now on this one, we will put the dark green first. So we were doing the white and the light green first, and now we will switch those because we're doing the next repeat. And when I get each one done, kind of tug them all, kind of get them all straightened out and look and make sure I haven't missed any dents. If I missed a dent, it's not the end of the world. If I didn't catch it, um, I can always uh, re-slay, you know, one or two, a few dents um, after I've threaded the heddles, um, tied on, wound on, and, uh, we can fix it, but I'd rather, if I can catch it before I wind on to the back or get a whole lot more threaded, uh, slayed, then let's do that. Now we're going to switch back to white first and dark green second. So by having the light green in each um, segment, segment. Basically, the light green is the, let's say the bot, one layer of the fabric, and the white and the dark green are a different layer of the fabric. Those two layers of fabric will trade places um, at uh, various at a given points in the weaving and that is what creates the um, where it looks like just plain green plain weave in a square and a nine patch um, in the other square. So on the reverse, where that nine patch is showing on one side, it will be the plain weave medium or uh, light green on the other side. So double weave is, is really 
an amazing um, way structure. I'm just, I've been fascinated by it for a long time. All right, and if I've done my math right, if I can count, I should have 12 segments left here. So two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, yay. <laughs> Nothing worse than getting to the end and finding out you can't count. All right, there we go. So now um, we can get these secured and we can turn the loom around and start threading the heddles. Okay, so we've got the loom turned around and I am going to start slaying this. Now, because I am slaying it from the back. I need to remember to slay my pattern from um, right to left because I've got it flipped around. So I've set up my treadle tracker over here to uh, track from left to right and we're going to uh, go ahead and do that. I also need to remember that the, um, the heddles closest to me are heddle eight or shaft eight and the one furthest away from me is shaft one. Because I'm used to threading and warping my loom from um, back to front, uh, I need to make sure that I remember that I am slain backwards. So I'll go ahead and take the first clip off and we're going to grab these first four threads and we're going to slay them um, on shafts four through one and uh, we're going to thread white, light green, dark green, light green. All right, so we'll pull over on four petals, one from each shaft. light green and I'm going to make sure I am pulling the light green from the correct um, dent. Dark green, light green. No, I don't need to do that and then we will just keep doing that. All right, so I've got this first section done and I'm going to just double check all of them, make sure that they're correct. The easiest way to do that is to take and raise uh, shaft four, they're all white, shaft three, they're all light green, shaft two, they're all dark green, Shaft one, they're all light green. Now, 
if I raise shaft one and two, those should be all in the same dent. And it looks like they are. And then if I raise shafts three and four, those should all be in the same dent. And I might have to tug on that down there a little bit. And it looks like they are. Perfect, okay. So that is how I'm going to check them. Now I'm going to put a clip on those and move on to the next section. The next section is the dark green, light green, white, light green from right to left. So I will go ahead and do those, count out the heddles. These are on shafts eight through uh, five. Okay, so here is a good example of why I check this. So let's see if I can zoom in here a little bit. So when I raised uh, the shafts seven and eight, those should have been all in the same dent. But you can see right here, I have a crossed thread. So what I needed to do is I need to fix this. And it's easiest to fix it now than to have to mess with it after I have tied everything on and slayed it. Um, so we're going to take my clip off here and isolate. And I don't, I want to be sure I don't pull any of these out. Um, so we're going to isolate it. This one, I believe, is my culprit. Yes, so what I've done here is I have crossed the light green thread from the white and got it in the dark green. So we will um, take these four threads out, or actually three threads, because that one is fine, and we will fix these. I think it's just gonna be easier to take all three threads out. That one goes there. This one that goes there and there. There, that's, that should be much better. All right, so we'll get these over here and then we will Try this again. Yeah. All right, that is much better. We'll do the same thing with these two. Make sure there are no crossed threads there. And it looks like we are good on that one. Awesome. Those don't want to slide down. I might need to wax that. Oops, sorry about that. I bumped my camera. All right, so now we'll just uh, keep going on. We will um, switch back to having the light or the white first and then uh, continue back and forth until we get to the end of our warp. And then we'll be ready to tie on to the uh, back rod.
Okay, so we have it tied on and now we are ready to start winding on to the back beam. So I'll set the camera up so that you can see uh, the entire loom and I weight my bouts off the front of the table to provide tension while I'm winding on. And we'll get some uh, warp protector in here and then we can go ahead and start winding on. Okay, so I've got it wound on until the um, the rod where I tied on is at the back roller. And now I'm going to put in my um, separator. So this is always a challenge for me to get it straight. It doesn't seem like I can ever do it well enough. All right, we'll try that. And I will just continue to wind on, watching everything, making sure things look right. And then after I get about one wrap on, I'm going to go and, oh, and I just tore it. Um, I'm gonna tug everything a little bit and just make sure everything is staying um, tight and nothing is getting twisted. Okay, so we have, uh, I've turned the loom around and I've put you where you can see the front of the loom, what I'm doing. So I'm going to take and um, cut all the loops and I'm going to lash on with this warp, um, mostly because uh, I think I probably used a little bit of my um, loom waste, a little more loom waste than I had anticipated on the back because I'm not used to warping front to back and uh, I probably didn't get the warp as even as I could have back there. So lashing on on this end will help counter that hopefully and now I'm going to take um, and divide these into groups of uh, 12 and then I can use those groups to lash on so two so we'll tie overhand knots yeah I think that'll work fine so tie overhand knots every 12 threads, and then we can use those to lash on. And this is actually pretty nice so, because I have a sturdy it cotton yarn shows that I me that I've that got I've wound this threaded onto right. a bobbin. It should and show me if I've got any to crossed threads. And then all the light green threads are on the bottom. All of the white here. and the dark green threads okay. are on so the top. So when I raise every other shaft, it's going to split these um, bouts that I've tied in half. And um, then I can just pull this around. So I go from my apron rod to 
uh, my bout. I go through the bout and then uh, from right to left and then go over the apron rod and through the next bout. Over the apron rod. Um, and then the I will bout. start from the right hand side and I will pull each lashing cord. I'm not pulling it super tight. Um, just tight enough to hold with my fingers. But you can see I'm getting quite a bit of slack across the entire warp. So now I'm going to wrap this around and, try and get these times. all the knots facing the same way things if I can. Taut, and then I can put those shafts down and then we can tension the entire warp. So I'm going to um, pull, I'm going to tighten the tension on the warp um, a little bit. And then just kind of pat it. Alternately, you could have all the knots facing up. Um, or you don't have to put them at the same in the same way at all. Really. I just like to. Okay, so that feels pretty good. This is feels a little loose over here, so I'm going to just kind of work that across. Maybe not pulling as hard as I did before, and then pulling even less here in the middle where it feels more taut. That feels much better. All right, so now I'm going to cut this end off, and I'm going to create a loop. So we'll take this, we'll wrap it around, create a loop. I'm going to take the tail and put it through that loop and then pull it back and see how that cinches it up. We're going to do that one more time. That will go the other way. And then I'm just going to kind of tie this around this last cord just to kind of keep it all um, if it does start to kind of unwind it, it won't go far. All right, so now we can advance our warp and we can start weaving. If you enjoyed watching this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. In the next video, I'll demonstrate how to weave this structure to create the iconic nine patch quilt look. Until then, thanks for watching and happy weaving.